I'm going to walk you through uh, Free Response 79 from the Baron Card 2nd Edition. It's a chi-square problem, and we've just started working on chi-square, so I figured it would be some really good practice for you guys. Um, first of all, I apologize for any noises you might hear in the background. My dog is sleeping next to me quite peacefully, and when she dreams, she tends to make a lot of noise. So if you hear any funny noises, it's probably my dog. Anyway, um, you'll notice I set up most of this problem to begin with, but... To walk you through random samples of adults in 2002, 2004, and 2006 were quizzed about whether or not they agreed with major Supreme Court decisions. The resulting counts were, and then they give us all these resulting counts. You'll notice I filled in the marginal distributions, all the totals for the columns and the rows. They weren't initially provided for us. You'll notice in a number of cases when you're doing a chi-square, you have to deal with that. And there's my cat. Don't mind her. Anyway, so what I'm looking for is, is there evidence that public opinion has changed? So what I'm looking to see is if the proportions from 2002, 2004, and 2006, if they differ. Now, chances are they're going to differ a little bit, but is it significant enough to say that there really is a difference? Let's see. Now, first of all, I want to figure out whether I'm running a chi-square test for homogeneity or independence. And you'll notice that I wrote down a few acronyms here. They kind of help me remember these. And I don't know, some people can remember these a bit easier, but I struggled a little bit when I first started doing chi-square. For homogeneity, I remember H did. What does that mean? H means difference in distribution. So that's what my null hypothesis would look like. I remember that H being for how many too, meaning that we're dealing with more than one sample or more than one population if it's homogeneity. For independence, Inna. That's how I remember it because IN for independence and then that means I'm testing for an association. In independence, that I tend to think for like individual. It's one sample that you're dealing with and then maybe you're breaking it up into categories. In this case, I am looking at a test for homogeneity. Why? Because we did more than one random sample here. We did them in 2002, 2004, 2006. Three distinct populations. Population from 2002, population from 2004, population from 2006. So I know this is going to be a test for homogeneity. So I can cross out independence because I'm not going to need that today. And I constructed my null and my alternate down below here. Since I know it's homogeneity, I know it's going to be a difference in distribution. So for my null, I said there is no difference in distribution in 2002, 2004, 2006. You always go into this assuming there is no difference in distribution. We're trying to prove that there is a difference in distribution. Perhaps, you know, 2004, 2006 provide us with a different proportion than 2002. We're going to find out. Before I run my test, I always want to do my conditions. Check my conditions first here. Random slash independent. Random samples from 2002, 2004, and 2006. I got that checked. Set it up above. 10% condition, 336, which is my total here, is less than 10% of all American adults, so check. Next, my expected counts. You'll notice I put see the table. I did all the hard work for you already. I did all my expected counts here. How they get these? Row, co uh, row total times column total divided by the total number sampled. Why? I get that question too. Why are you doing row times column total and then dividing by the total? When I used to teach seventh grade math, I always used to talk about relationship within proportions. So right here, I'm looking at mostly agreed over a total. So I do 203 over 336. And then I can go to here, 2002, see if this proportion holds up. This is what I'd expect. Over my total of 122... How many would I expect to mostly agree if that proportion or ratio is the same here? It's still, if it's 203 over 336, if that ratio maintains, what would I expect to see out of 122? So then you just cross multiply. 122 times 203 divided by 336, just like I did here. You'll notice I got my expected count of 73.71. Always keep your decimals. Don't turn them into integers. Keep them as decimals. Notice I did that for everyone going across here. So for 2004 here, I did 109, which was my column total times my row total of 203, divided by 336. In 2006, did my column total of 105, 
times 203 divided by 336. When I went down to here, you'll notice 133 I used for all of these. That's my row times my column. 133 times 122. 133 times 109. 105 times 133. And each time I divided it by my total of 336. And I got all my expected counts here. As you can see, they are all greater than or equal to 5. So I've met that condition. I am ready to proceed. Now, the way I set this up, I did this the long way. I set this up using the formula. Luckily, we have a TI calculator. You can enter these values into a matrix, and then it will do the chi-square test for you. However, it's good to know what these formulas look like. Chances are in AP exam, you'll see this asked you know, in formula form. They might give you a table and say, how would you find the chi-square statistic? Instead of just plugging in your calculator, they'll give you the formulas written out like this, and you'll have to say, hmm, is this right? Each time, I took what I observed minus what I expected, squared that, divided by what I expected. That's pretty typical. Even when you're doing like z-scores and standard deviation, you always go observe minus expected over what you expected. So it's a pretty standard formula you use each time. So I did that each time here. Observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Did that for all of these. It's a lot of work, as you can see. Ultimately, I got a chi-square statistic of about 6.6, .6, somewhere in that ballpark. If you enter, enter this into the matrices on your calculator, you'll get an answer very similar, if not exact, exactly what I got. And you have a couple of options now, once you get that chi-square statistic, to figure out your p-value. Now remember, what is this chi-square statistic telling us? It's telling us like how far off we really are because if there was really no difference or if there was a very small difference you'd expect a very small number here like in this case this really isn't that far off from the difference 64 minus 65.85 that's really not far off from what we'd expect i'd even argue that here for 45 43.15 once we get to here though you'll notice we're a bit far off from what we expect we saw 55 and we expected 63.44. Here, we saw 50 and we expected 41.56. Those are some big differences, but what we're testing to see is if it's really statistically significant. I got my degrees of freedom here. There are a number of ways I can figure out my p-value now. I could use chi-square CDF, that's a function on your calculator. You enter in your chi-square statistic, which was 6.6, .6, which would be your lower. We're trying to find the probability of getting that difference or higher. So then your upper would be like upper infinity or a bunch of nines like I like to enter. And then you enter in your degrees of freedom, which in this case is two. How I get degrees of freedom? What I did was I did total number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one, rows minus one, columns minus one. Multiply them out, two minus one times three minus one, gives me a nice answer of two. So I can use chi-square CDF to get there. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now and we'll see how it tests out. I'm gonna show you another function that you can use as well. So okay, 6.6, All right, and when I did that, I got about 0.4. 368, somewhere in that ballpark. Pretty low p value. Now we need to establish the significance level, but if it's not established, always go with 0 0.05. Now I can also use the table. Here's what I did I used the table here. I looked for my degrees of freedom of 2, and I looked for my chi square statistic in here. My chi square statistic fell between 5.99 and 7.38 which tells me that based on the table here, my p-value, it's going to be between 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.025, excuse me, and 0 0.05, which as we see when I plugged in my calculator, that checked out. We ended up getting right in between there. So table's also a function you can use if you need to. But nonetheless, we got a p-value here. We know our p-value is going to be less than 0 
So what does that mean? I can reject my null hypothesis. So I'm going to write my nice little statement here. Since my p-value 0.0368 is less than my significant... Oh, wow, that looked awful. Let me try that again. My significance level... I have enough evidence to reject my null hypothesis. To reject the hoe. So ultimately, I have enough evidence to say there's a difference in distribution. Remember, H did, homogeneity, DID, difference in distribution. Difference in distribution in 2002, 2004, and I can squeeze this in, 2006. I hear a lot, do I really have to write all this? Yes, because this is all context-based. It's not just about numbers here. We're trying to tie it into some sort of bigger problem. So you had a chance to see me walk through a chi-square homogeneity problem based on a table. I had to find my expected counts. I had to do my marginal distribution, determine what kind of test to run. And I did it formula-wise using chi-square CDF. You can use the function on your calculator where you can enter it into a matrix and then just run a chi-square test. You have that option as well. You also got to see how I use the table too. So hopefully this helps guide you through a chi-square problem. And again, if you ever have questions, you can always email me at gamashstats at gmail.com. Or actually at stats gamash, excuse me. That's all right. I'm going to write that out. So if you have a question, you want me to go over it, or maybe it's a question about the video, that's stats gamash. at gmail.com. Take care and be safe.